Well, you know what? After school today, you can go outside and enjoy the sunshine. So right now, problem number one, we need to simplify this expression, okay? So I want you guys to look carefully at it. This is something you should know how to do, all right? So let's think about what we're going to have. Right now, everybody, I'm going to break things down into its prime factors. 9 can be rewritten as a 3 times 3. A can be rewritten as an A times A. And B can be rewritten as so. 27 can be rewritten as 3 times 3 times 3. A to the fourth is not going to bless you. There's A to the fourth. There's B to the fourth. Little tiny multiplication symbols. And thank goodness we just have one symbol. I like it. So right now, what if I listed all of these? These are considered to be its that's a horrible thing. Prime factors. Prime factors, very good. Way to say it while you're young. To show your enthusiasm. That's true. There's your prime factors listed out. Nice and neat. All right, now that we have all those listed out, what we're going to do next is we're going to cancel things out, cancel things out that are exactly alike. So this 3 is divisible by this 3, so that cancels out to a 1. This 3 cancels out that 3, that's divisible to a 1. We've got A here and an A here. We've got 1, 2, 3 Bs, so cancel out 1, 2, 3 Bs. And now, let's think about, oh my goodness, Everything in the numerator canceled out. So the only number we actually have there is a 1. Because anything divisible by itself is 1. So we have a 1 in the numerator. How many 3's do we have in the denominator? 1, 3. How many A's do we have in the denominator? We have A squared. How many B's? 1. Then we have what? 1, C. So this right here would be your final answer. Now you don't have to list all of your prime factors out. There is a shortcut that you can do. It's not that hard. You can do this in your head. All right, that's what you would do if you were to list everything out. Here's the shortcut. Nine goes to 27 three times. So there's the one third. All of these A's get canceled out. What are you left with? You're left with two. All of these B's cancel out. What are you left with? One. So you have a one. You've got a three. You've got an A squared, a B, and a C. So when you're you're just looking at how many of these will cancel out, how many's in the the bottom, and that's your final answer. All right, and number two is a little bit more difficult than problem number one. Right now, in your journal, we have to think about factors that are common to each other in the numerator. So I want you guys to think, what does a 10 break down to? It breaks down to a what? A 2 and a 5. What does a 15 break down to? 5 and a 3. Does, does a 10 and a 15 have a common factor? It has a 5, so I want you guys to factor out a 5 out of this expression. We're going to factor 5 out. Now, y times y is y times 1. This is just as 1y. If I have two y's here and I have one y here, does this monomial have a common factor to this monomial? Y. Yes. It has a y in common. It only has one y in common, not y squared in common. So right here. Everybody, I'm going to write down, we factored out a 5 times what? We factored out a 5 times what? Now, I'm going to highlight something in blue and purple right here. Okay? Blue and purple. I'm going to put a plus sign right here in the middle. What number times 5y will give me a 10? Y squared. Let's think about this. We took out a we took out a five and a y, right? Would you guys agree right here? We took out a five and a y. Well, what factors do we have left? Two y. We have two y. Okay. Now, what did we take out of this right here? We took out a what? 
a five and a why? What's the only thing we have left? And that's how you factor. When you you look when you break it down, all right. When you take a factor out, you put whatever's in whatever's left inside of the parentheses. So let's break down the thirty-five. What does the thirty-five break down? Uh, five and a seven. Five and a seven. Y times Y minus 5 times Y. So let's think about this. What does this monomial, what factors does this monomial have in common with this monomial? A 5 and a Y. So we get to factor out a 5 and a Y out of that expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle a 5 and I'm going to circle a Y because I factored that out. So what do I have left? So I have a 7. Why? I have a minus sign this time, right? Minus. What did I factor out of this guy? Both of them, right? If I factor out both, that's when you put a 1. After you factor things out, you have to know how to check. What is 5y times 2y? That's 10y squared. What is 5y times a 3? 15y. 5y times 7y is 35y squared. And 5y times a negative 1 is a negative 5y. So we did factor it correctly. Now, this is a factor. This is a factor. Do you see how 5y and 5y are both in the numerator and the denominator? That allows us to cancel those out. So your final answer, everybody, is 2y plus 3 divided by 7y minus 7. That's your final answer. Now some of you may have a question. Like, Wait a second. Can't you simplify this even more? You can't because this right here is a binomial. This right here is a binomial. The only time you can simplify binomials is if they're the exact same one. So for example, if I had an x plus 3 and I had another x plus 3, that's going to equal a 1. But if I have a 2x plus 3 divided by x plus 3, I can't simplify. Now, if I had 2y divided by 7y, I could simplify this to a 2 7 because the y's will cancel each other out. But 2y and 7y, they're not binomials. They're monomials. Okay? So you can simplify monomials if they have something in the numerator and the denominator. Everybody, next problem I want you guys to put is problem number three in your journal. This is going to be the last problem that we do together. All right, on problem number three, what I would like you to do is above the trinomial known as 2k squared minus k minus 15, I want you to open up a parentheses and open up a parentheses. I want you to write in a 2 times k and a k. 2k times k will give me a 2k squared. All right? Everybody, we are going to use the concept known as the FOIL method to help us solve this problem. All right? Now, in the FOIL method, I'm going to write F O I. L. The most important part right now is not the F, it's not the L, it's going to be the out, outer and inner term. The outside and the inner term. So right now, what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to take a pen or a highlighter or something, alright? I want you to focus on the outside terms right here and the inside terms right here. So we're just focusing on the outside and the inside terms. The L, the last terms, our product is a negative 15. We know our last term right here is a negative 15. So what are the factors of 15? The factors of 15 are either a 15 and a 1, or they're considered to be a 3 and a 5. So what I want you guys to understand right now, as you write this down, is I'm either going to put a 5, and a 3 here, a 3 or a 5 here, a 1 and a 15, or 
a 15 and a 1. Those are the different numbers that could possibly go there. But what are they going to be factors of? They're going to be factors of the last term. So we have to figure out what number goes here and what number goes right here. So right now, I want you to write in your journal the outside terms okay, of the foil method. The outside terms are going to equal 2k times some number. The inside terms are going to equal some number times the value of k. So 2k times empty box will be the outside term. This box times k will be the inside term. Now, together, these are going to equal two different products, okay? We're going to have two products that are literally going to add up together. When we're done, they're going to add up together to equal a negative k. So right here, I'm going to make sure I'm going to put negative k right here. So whatever I get right here, whatever I get right here, when you add them together, they're going to give you a negative k. Now, what we're going to do is we're going, you're not going to put this in your journal until you get to the final answer, but we're going to choose some numbers, and on the video, we're going to come up with different answers right here to let you know when you get it wrong. Okay? So right now, that's what we're going to do next. All right, what we're going to do right now is we're going to do some problems that are incorrect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 15 and a 1 right there. So if I put a 15 and a 1, a 1 will go here, and a 15 will go here. So what's 2K times 1? 2K. What's 15 times K? 15K. Now, even if they were positive or negative, what's the only two answers I could get? Either a 17 or a 13, either positive or negative, right? So that's not going to get me a negative K. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to go, I'm going to erase this, I'm going to erase this. That's not right. That's not right. Go back over here. Incorrect. Incorrect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, let's just put a 5, put a 3 here and a 5 right there. Okay? So I have a 3 and a 5. What's 2K times a 5 going to get me? 10 in what? 10K. What's 3 times K going to get me? 3K. Now what could be my two possible answers if I added those together? I could get a 13 or I could get some type of 7, right? Negative or positive 7, right? Depending on where the negative sign is. So 10K and 3K don't give me a negative K. Now what I want you to do is I want you to get your pencil ready because we're going to do the final answer that works. I'm going to erase these right here. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the 5 right here, and I'm going to put the 3 right here. Now, what do these numbers have to multiply together to equal? They have to multiply together to equal this 15, okay? What is 2K times 3? 2K times 3 is 6K. What is 5 times K? That's 5K. Now, I want you guys to look at this carefully. Because what have I not thrown in yet? I've not thrown in whether which one's positive and which one's negative yet. I have a 6K and a 5K. If I do 6K minus 5K, that would actually give me 1K. But if I make this the negative 6 and keep this the positive 5, that will give me a negative k value. So what does that mean that this happens, this, this 3 right here? i got to make this one the negative, and i got to keep this one the positive. So right here on your paper, what you're going to do, you're going to put plus here and minus here. So right here, here are your factors. 2k plus 5 times k minus 3 is this trinomial. Now this one's the easy one to factor. This one is called the difference of squares. You've seen this. You have it in your journal. The factors of k squared minus 9 are k plus 3 and k minus 3. These end up dividing out and become a 1. Your final answer right now is 
this.